Hi, welcome. Today's lesson is on what's inside an atom. And by now you should probably know the answer to this. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. That's what's inside an atom. And you need to copy this chart down, so pause the video and get out a piece of paper and pencil and copy this chart. Now this one column you don't need to know, the mass and grams. I've just added that. But you do need to know the rest. So pause, get a piece of paper and pencil, and then come back. Thanks. Thanks for getting notes. So the proton, you know, has a positive charge. Electrons have a negative charge. And neutrons are neutral. These are their masses in grams, but we do not usually deal with them in grams. We talk about them because they're so small in a different unit and that unit is called AMU, or atomic mass unit. And in this unit, protons weigh one, neutrons weigh one, and electrons are virtually zero. Not exactly, as you can see, they're one, 1,833rd the mass of a proton. So often we just say zero. And where are they located? Well, from our review of the atomic scientists, we know that protons are in the nucleus, thanks to Rutherford. We know that neutrons are in the nucleus, thanks to Chadwick. And the electrons are in clouds, or what Schrodinger called orbitals. So if I think about the nucleus, which is in the center, and the electron cloud, which is outside the nucleus, and I think about their relative size, we get this from Rutherford, that the nucleus is about one ten thousandth the size of the atom itself. So notice here are the exact measurements. Well, I shouldn't say exact. The relative measurements is about 1 times 10 to the negative 15th meters for the size of the nucleus compared to 1 times 10 to the negative 10th meters the size of the atom. Now atoms can vary between element, but these are just kind of rough estimates. So let's think about the nucleus. So that contains the protons and neutrons, like we just said. It is very, very small. It is also very dense. It contains almost the entire mass of the atom. And if you were as dense as just a nucleus, you'd weigh about 75 trillion tons. Wow, you'd really have to diet then. No, that's the weight you would be if you were as dense as the nucleus. So why are you not that dense? Because atoms are mostly empty space. And that means you are too. What about the electron cloud or the Schrodinger orbitals they are also called? Well, they contain only the electrons. And they virtually have no mass, yet they fill almost the entire volume of the atom. They're much larger than the nucleus, about 10,000 times the diameter, and they're not very dense at all, mostly empty space. So if I had a mental picture of the size of the nucleus compared to the atom itself, what could I use as a relative analogy? Well, if you're at a soccer field and you put a marble in the middle of the soccer field and that represented the nucleus, how big would your atom be? Well the size of a soccer field, but three-dimensionally, so up and down, sideways, and everything. So that is pretty small, and the electrons would be just a few tiny bits of dust that were swirling around the marble in the middle in a three-dimensional space. And this dust and its electric field keeps everything off the soccer field. That's pretty amazing, too. So, how do I find how many protons, neutrons, and electrons I have in an atom? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look at elements. Remember from Unit 1 that an element is a set of identical atoms, and so it's a specific type of atom is called an element. The number of protons defines or identifies the element. The number of protons may not change without changing the identity of the element. 
So what does that mean? So let's take a look at this periodic table. So these whole numbers here, one, two, three, four, five, six, that go up the periodic table, also tells me how many protons there are in those elements. So if I look at carbon, and there's a number six, that tells me there are six protons in carbon. There are never seven protons in carbon. There are never five protons in carbon. There's only always six protons. So if I know the number of protons, I can also figure out the element if I have a periodic table. And if I know the element, I also know the number of protons. So magnesium has 12 protons. Potassium has 19 protons. Oxygen has eight protons. If I said what element had 30 protons, you would look at the symbol, and this is zinc. Zinc has 30 protons. So I could tell from a periodic table how many protons there were in an atom. I can also tell from something called isotopic notation. So make sure you write this down also in your notes. And it has a bunch of symbols, and we're going to talk about what each of these symbols mean. So it has an X in the middle, a Z down at the left corner, an A at the upper left corner, and a Q in the upper right corner. So what do all these mean? So the X is the element symbol. So if I was talking about carbon, I wouldn't put an X here, I'd put a C. If I was talking about oxygen, I'd put an O there instead of an X. If I was talking about hydrogen, I'd put an H there. So the X stands for the element itself. The Z stands for the atomic number. The A stands for the mass number. And the Q stands for the charge. So pause the video and write all of that down. Thanks for writing that down. So let's take a look at the Z, the atomic number. I just said that that was equal to the number of protons. So for carbon, that number happens to be six. And there's only one Z number for every element. So if I looked at the periodic table, Z is always 11 for sodium. Z is always 26 for iron. If I looked up bromine, it always has a Z value of 35. So if you have a periodic table, you can figure out the Z value and you can also figure out the protons. So just like I said, if you know the element name, you can find the Z, you can find the protons or vice versa. So here we have it, nickel. Find nickel on this periodic table, it's in the middle. How many protons does nickel have? Yes, you're right, 28. Find helium, that's at the top right. How many protons does helium have? Yep, you're right, that's two. Good job. So in your problem book, you have a chart like this that you're gonna have to fill out. So you can take some notes or you can pause the video and actually get out your problem book and find this page and copy the notes down along this chart also. So we've already talked that the atomic number is the Z value, which also equals the number of protons, which also tells you what element you have. So if I know any of these columns, I know the other two. If I know the atomic number is 20, I can look up that on the periodic table, that's calcium. I also know this is 20. If the atomic number is 13, I also know that's 13 protons, and I can look up and find 13 on the periodic table. So if I know this, I know the atomic number, and I know the protons. Once I know one, I know the other two. All right, so we've covered Z and X. What about A? A is the mass number, which is the mass of the element. And that equals the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus, because as we said, electrons really don't weigh enough to really count. They are not significant enough. So I said A, the atomic mass, is the protons plus the neutrons, or here the protons plus the neutrons. Here I say Z and here I say P, but they're the same thing. Z number is also the protons. It's always a whole number if I'm speaking about one specific type of atom. There are no partial protons or no partial neutrons. And we're only talking about one type of atom at a time. And if I wanted to know the neutrons, I can just take these equations up here 
and rearrange them and solve for n. So how does that work? That means if I rearrange this equation, I get the number of neutrons equals the mass minus the protons, which is also written here. So A minus C tells me how many neutrons I have. So let's try that. How many protons and how many neutrons in this? All right? I have protons equals 11. Neutrons then equals 23 minus 11, 12. So that makes sense. If there are 11 protons, they weigh 1. There are 12 neutrons, they weigh 1. Together, the atom weighs 23 atomic mass units. Great job. So now I can go back to this chart and fill in on the top of this. So how do I find the number of neutrons? That's the mass minus the atomic number. How do I find the mass number? That's the neutrons plus the protons. Very good. Let's go on to the next thing. What is the Q value? Well, that's the charge of the atom. So charged atoms aren't called anodes anymore. They're called ions. And the charge results from a comparison of protons and electrons. So if I have equal number of protons and electrons, that's neutral atom. If they're unequal protons and electrons, then I have an ion. So if I have extra electrons, I gain them from some source, I am going to have a negative ion, and that's called an anion. And if I lost some electrons somehow, that's going to result in a positive ion, and that's a called a cation. And I have an easy way to remember that because cat ions are positive. Oh, that's too good. So how do I find the electrons from the Q value? Well, I'm glad you asked. If Q is zero, that's really easy. The electrons equals the protons. If I have 10 protons, I have 10 electrons, then I have a neutral charge. And usually we do not write zero for Q, we just leave it blank. If they're not equal, how do I find it? I use this equation. Electrons equals the atomic number minus the charge, or the charge equals the atomic number minus the electrons. These two equations are the same. They're just rewritten to solve for a different variable. So let's try an example. How many protons, neutrons, and electrons in this example? All right. 17 is the number of protons. Pause the video and see if you can do the neutrons and the electrons. Yep, hopefully you pause. The neutrons is 35 minus 17. 35 minus 17, which is 18. What about those electrons? That's 17 minus a minus 1, which is 18. And that makes sense because if I have 18 electrons and 17 protons, I have 17 positive things and 18 negative things. So I have one more electron, which means I have a negative one charge. So very good. Let's take a look at that chart on the problem book and add the next column. So Z minus Q gives me the number of electrons and protons minus electrons gives me the overall charge. And let's try one more example, although we kind of duplicated this example, but we will use it here. Find the protons, electrons, and neutrons, or protons, neutrons, and electrons in this example. So pause the video and see if you can get it. Protons is 11. Did you get that? What about the neutrons? The neutrons is 23 minus 11. That's equals to 12. And what about those electrons? That's 11 minus 1, and that's 10. And notice there was no number with this positive charge. So that assumes it's a positive 1. And that makes sense because I have 11 protons and 10 electrons. I have one less electron than proton, which should give me a positive 1 charge. So thanks for listening. See you in class.